Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to This Family Life and another grocery tips and tricks video. We are out on the patio this morning. We've got our coffee per the usual. Got my list per the usual, so don't forget things I want to tell you about. And today's topic is inflation. I'm going to need coffee to make it through this one. So how are we all feeling <laughs> about inflation? Let me know in the comments. How's it got in your area? Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? How are we feeling? How are we feeling on a day-to-day -day basis? I am not feeling good. So in the last video, you heard me talk a little bit about how it's affected my grocery challenge for this year. My challenge was just to myself, okay, to try to spend $50 a week on groceries for my family of four. Could it be done in 2023? At the beginning of the year, I was a little cocky. I was like, yeah, this can totally be done. No problem. I'll, I'll see what the problem is. Um, here we are. It is um, the 1st of October. So for the first seven months of the year, I felt really good about it. I would say we got to August and September and I didn't feel as good about it. And the reason for that is we finally started to see some good deals. Hadn't seen good deals all year. And we finally started to see some. So it was exciting. I went over budget. I spent in order to get those good deals. Okay. But moving forward, how do I feel about the $50? I don't feel great. It's getting hard. It's getting real hard to stay in that. The reasons are prices continue to go up. There's never a week where I go into the store and I'm like, wow, prices are really starting to come down. They're just not. They're not coming down. And they just continue to go up. And sometimes I think, okay, how high can it get before it's just not worth buying things anymore? And we've reached that point on quite a few things. I'll give you a perfect example of that. Uh, my son just turned nine years old and we wanted to get him a cookie cake for karate. We always do cookie cakes in our house and he gets a special cookie cake to take to karate. I logged in to order a cookie cake and it was going to be $50. <laughs> 50 bucks for a cookie cake. And I looked at my husband and I was like, I'm sorry, but it has just, it's got to a point where that's just no longer worth it. Um, and the kids don't really care what you bring. You know, it's, it, they just want a treat, right? Cause it's your kid's birthday. So I said, let's just go to HEB. We went to HEB and we got a platter that had five desserts. It had four different types of cookies and then it had brownie bites in the middle. It was $16. So we picked that up. We took it to karate and guess what? The kids loved it. My son loved it. He didn't miss the cookie cake. He was perfectly fine without it. And that was a huge savings. So we are starting to reach those points where things just aren't worth buying anymore. And, and we've hit that with a lot of things. That's just one recent example. And he still got cookie cake for his birthday. Don't think we're like not letting him have any food or anything. I promise that's not the case. It was just for this one thing. Like it got to where all the kids were bringing cookie cake every birthday. And I'm like, I, I'm not going to try to keep up with the Joneses when it's that much. It's just not worth it. And then what's funny is the next birthday that rolled around, guess what? That mom didn't bring cookie cake either. She led, she took kind of, you know, took my example and rolled with it. And she went and got Halloween cookies and the kids loved it. They were so excited. Pumpkin cookies. Yay. So it's going to be okay if you make those changes, I promise. So anyways, what are we going to do, right? So I'm going to stick to the $50 budget for the rest of this year. That was the challenge I set out for myself. We'll just see what happens with that. And we'll adjust for next year. Quite honestly, I want to continue to do low spend next year, even if I don't have to. I enjoy it. It's it's kind of gives me a purpose with my groceries and everything. And so we'll see where we come out for the year, kind of what our average was for all the different weeks. And then figure out, do we want to try to beat that? in 2024? Do we think we need to go higher with the budget in 2024 because things aren't getting any better? What are we feeling? So today we're going to talk about inflation on several different food items and how we are working around that. So I thought maybe that would be helpful for everyone to see. So the first item that I chose to talk about is ground beef, hamburger meat. Okay. We use hamburger meat in a lot of things, right? You can put it on pizza. You can uh, do lasagna you can do tacos, you can do spaghetti. There's lots of different things that we make with ground beef, okay? 
ground beef has gone up in 2023, an average in the United States of 4%. It's actually over 4%, but with round up, round down rules, we'll call it 4%. Okay, that's not taking into account how much it's rose in 2022, 2021, 2020. Now keep in mind, things started going up in 2020, right? We had the lockdown, we had manufacturing plants that didn't have workers for a very long time. They've had struggles getting workers in ever since. We've had struggles with transportation ever since. It's, it's, they've been going up. They've been going up since 2020. So these numbers are only 2023 numbers so far, over 4%. So we don't buy a lot of ground hamburger anymore. Now, I will say this, I never look a gift horse in the mouth, right? And so we actually had someone in our neighborhood that uh, needed to give away a lot of food. They were moving, they had freezers full of food. We were able to get one of those big, huge, like Sam's Club chubs of hamburger, plus I wanna say enough hamburger patties to grill like 80 hamburgers. And so, they gave that all to us to put in our freezer and utilize. And so we've just finished using that. So I'm just now needing to buy ground beef again. Um, so you've seen that in the last couple of grocery haul videos. So I've started buying ground beef again. It's $4.99 a pound, $4.99 a pound, $5 for a pound of hamburger meat. So not doing that. So what I will say that we are doing to fight this is we are watching for those specials. Okay. And we aren't a big fan of the meat in the tubes that you can't see. Okay. Like the Kroger ones. Um, we'll utilize that if we have to. That's okay. Um, if it goes on sale for $1.99 a pound, I'm buying those tube ones and we deal with it. But we prefer the fresh ground hamburger meat and everything. So $4.99 a pound. This week at Brookshire's, it was $2.99 a pound. As long as you bought the value packs, I went and bought five. Absolutely 100% stock up on that when you see it go that low. That's $2 a pound in savings. That is almost 50%, almost 50% off per pound. So do that. You've got to learn, here's my regular price. Here's the good sale price. The good sale price used to be 99 cents a pound. I can remember when we got ground beef for 99 cents a pound. I can remember when we got ground beef for $1.99 a pound, but $2.99 a pound is still astronomically better than $4.99 a pound, especially when you're talking about good quality hamburger. I'm not talking about the hidden hamburger. <laughs> I'm talking the good quality stuff that you can see that came straight from the butcher block, okay? So that would be my tip on that one, is buy it when you find it on sale. Buy it when you find it on clearance. You saw me buy it at only 25% off at Brookshire's a couple of weeks ago, and that was a good deal. And that made it around the same price that I just paid for what I paid at Brookshire's. Okay, number two is chicken. We use a lot of boneless, skinless chicken breasts and boneless, skinless chicken thighs in our house. Chicken has gone up about 3% in 2024, okay? So what I did to get these numbers for y'all, just so you know, they're not from any particular site. It's just, I went on several different sites, kind of took their information and averaged it out to get like a real number, okay, because any site can be skewed in any different way. So I don't ever trust one source. So about 3%, again, that doesn't take into account all the raises we've seen along the way, but chicken's gotten really expensive. And so we have done some bone-in chicken to supplement that. Uh, the bone-in seems to still be a much better deal price-wise, but you do have to take into account the weight of the bone versus the weight of the meat that you're getting. So keep that in mind figure out which one's your better deal. But recently we've had lots of good deals at Tom Thumb where they've had chicken on sale with a limit of 10 pounds. It's either, usually it's both boneless skinless chicken breast or boneless skinless chicken thighs. And you can buy up to 10 pounds. Usually it's a dollar, it's, it's like a dollar 49 to a dollar 79. It depends on what the sale is that week. So I've been doing that. I've been going and I've been buying 10 pounds. And so I'll alternate between the two. I'll get 10 pounds of chicken breast or I'll get 10 pounds of chicken thighs. And that's what I've been doing to stock up the freezer. Again, you just need to figure out what your good deals are now and buy them when they're on sale. I've also bought chicken recently on Markdowns at Brookshire's a couple of times. And then those uh, Sunland chicken breasts. I bought a lot of those because when those bags go on sale where it's 49 to 79 cents a pound for boneless skinless chicken breasts, I buy those. I will cook them all in the Instant Pot, shred them up, and then use them in lots of different foods. So you just got to be watching. 
that's that's all I can really tell you on meat is you got to be watching for the sales and stock up when they're on sale that's the big one and then make sure you're looking at your clearance meat area in your store and see if you can find any good deals there so other meat like they have an other meat category which I think would be things like steak um cube steak ham turkey things like that average of five percent increase so far in 2023 and what i would say with this one is again it's the same thing with any meat right just be watching your sales so we've bought hams this year but we buy them when they're on the clearance thing you saw me talk about the turkey that i ended up putting back because i was like even on the clearance deal i'm not paying this high a price for it so it's gonna be okay we have a lot of variety of meats in our freezer um, but a lot of it i find when it's on those clearance markdown deals and like here recently i've found chicken i found stew meat i found ground beef i found um chicken thighs as well ham turkey there's been lots of different foods on the markdown thing um, I don't see fish a lot. I've seen it a couple of times, but not a lot. I saw those ribs that I picked up. So that's how we're combating the meat issue, okay? We're only buying it with something when it's on sale and we are buying off the clearance area. Now, sometimes the clearance meat looks a little sketch. If it looks sketch, don't buy it. If it's already turned brown, if it doesn't look right, I don't mess with it. But if it looks good, I'm, I'm down, I'm buying it. Okay. So daily uh, milk products have gone up uh, 4%. So dairy, an average of 4%. And we do still drink milk in our house. We have cereal, we need it for baking and things. So what I do is I wait for Kroger to have their 99 cents per half gallon of milk and I buy the limit. Uh, sometimes it'll have chocolate milk in it, which is new to us. We've, we've seen that in other regions, but not in ours until this year. And so if it's got the chocolate milk, I will buy those for the kids as a treat because it really is really good chocolate milk. And it's different than putting like Hershey syrup and milk and stirring it up. They, they will do that too. But I will buy the limit of five. You can freeze milk if you've got room for it in your freezer. You can absolutely freeze milk. So that's what we do. We only buy milk on sale. And I am not afraid to let us go without milk for a week in our house. We have no little kids that need milk. And so it's okay. If we don't have milk for a week, it's gonna be okay, I promise. No one's going to die in my home without milk for a week. So if it's if it's full price, I just don't buy it. I'm okay with that. Um, fats and oils. Now this is your big one. Your cooking fats and oils has gone up almost 10%. 10% this year alone. Uh, there are astronomical prices at the grocery store when it comes to fats and oils. Now, I don't use a lot of Crisco, I don't use lard, um, anything like that. I use a lot of olive oil, I use a lot of canola oil, and I use like the spray, like Pam type stuff for cooking. So what I have found is that my best deals on those are at Sam's Club. So that's where I buy them. I can get two of the big huge bottles of canola oil. They're like gallon bottles almost. Maybe, maybe not quite a gallon, but they're, they're pretty big. If you've been to Sam's, you know what I'm talking about. Two of those for about $13 and it lasts me a long time. And same thing with olive oil. I buy a big, huge one at Sam's. It's a lot less there. And then the spray Sam's Club brand of Pam is way cheaper to get at their store. So that's how I'm combating that area. That is one of my normal day in, day out things that I always pick up at Sam's. The next one is processed fruits and vegetables have gone up an average of 9%. So you've heard me say, like shop your deals and see if canned, frozen, or fresh is your best option. And you're just gonna have to keep doing that. And I will tell you, we don't buy really any frozen fruits. We pretty much only buy fresh fruits because it's stuff that's going in the kids' lunches. It's gonna be apples. It's gonna be bananas. It's gonna be little cuties. Those are pretty much the only three fruits we buy. We buy an occasional watermelon just to cut up and eat at home. Uh, we'll buy some grapes occasionally just to eat at home, but those are like our primary fruits right there. So we don't buy anything for like smoothies or anything like that. Uh, vegetables, I still buy most of mine canned at Sam's because I can still get a better deal on them there 
than at the regular grocery store. So that's how I've been combating that. But you're just gonna have to look at those prices and determine what's your best deal. Is it gonna be canned? Is it gonna be fresh or is it gonna be frozen? And wherever you find the best price, that's the one you go with. So the next one is sugar. Sugar has gone up over 9% this year alone. Now, I haven't really felt the effects of this one as much because before it started to rise, I had already made the decision that I was going to buy a, it was either 20 or 25 pound bag of flour, of sugar, and rice. And I bought the buckets with the food grade lids and I put everything in buckets. So I've got plenty of sugar, I've got plenty of flour, and I've got plenty of rice. I haven't had to worry about the increases in those for the rest of this year. Now, what I will say is if you have the funds available and you can find those marked down on a good deal, that's what I would do. I would buy them in bulk and stock them and then you have them and you don't have to worry about it. That has been like a freeing experience. Like I wish I could do that with all foods, right? It has been so nice that when my container in my kitchen starts to get empty, I just go in there and open the big bucket and get it out of there and I don't have to go to the store for those items and so that's been very freeing and it has not affected my budget at all and so maybe if if there's not great grocery sales one week you will find occasional weeks where there's just not a lot of good grocery deals and so you're not spending your full budget buy one of those buy sugar this time or buy your buckets first and then buy sugar one time buy flour one time buy rice one time then you have them and you've worked them into your grocery budget because you worked them in on weeks where the sales weren't as good. So that's what I would do on that one. The next one is cereal, again, over 9%, edging closer to 10% actually. So we quit buying cereal. It's one of those items I'm telling you, we have learned we can live without. We don't have to have cereal. Now, with that being said, when Fruity Pebbles goes on sale for $1.99, I still stock up on five. That is Amber's favorite cereal. She loves it. I buy her Fruity Pebbles, but she knows that's the only time I'm gonna buy them. So she has to make them last. So I would say if you're gonna buy cereal, you have to learn to make it last. And the boxes have gotten smaller, so that's harder to do. You're getting less cereal for the same price or higher price, and then you gotta make it last. But we've just learned we don't need it. We don't need cereal. We can make breakfast, we can freeze it, we can pull it out each morning, zap it in the microwave, it's perfectly fine, and no one is missing cereal promise you they're not my son was never a big cereal person to begin with he definitely doesn't miss cereal my daughter was the bigger cereal eater and now we have like eight boxes of fruity pebbles in the pantry because she's just not reaching for them she's reaching for other things so the next one is beverages beverages eight percent that's a sad one because i i know you can just drink water i know you can you can just drink tap water i know but I don't want to. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I don't want to. Um, I enjoy an occasional soda. I enjoy my coffee. I enjoy juice. It's all gotten really expensive. So what are we doing about that? Okay. Coffee is getting really expensive. Coffee, I only buy the big, huge box when it's on sale. So this week, Amazon has a 20% off coupon on it. So I'm probably going to buy some coffee this week to stock up again on coffee. Uh, coffee creamer has gotten really expensive. So what I do is I wait until they put it on sale. Uh, they just had Dunkin' Extra Extra on sale for $2.99, a limit of five. I went to the store, they didn't have any, I got a rain check. And you best believe I went back and used my rain check and I bought all five. Now I'm the only person in my house drinking coffee, but that creamer's gonna last. And so that's what I do. When they're on sale, I buy the limit of five and I roll with coffee creamer for a while. I don't have to worry about it. Uh, sodas, you saw I only bought this year at Memorial Day sales and at Labor Day sales. That's canned sodas. Those are the only ones I bought. And then for bottled sodas, I only buy them when they're 99 cents. And that is only to go in our movie stock up area. Those don't get drank any other time. Now I say any other time. If we're having a cookout, yeah, we'll put a bottle of soda in. But it's very rare. Pizza night, grilling, or movies. That's the only time they're going to get a soda. And 99% of the time when we're grilling or having pizza, I forget to put one in the fridge. So we don't even have one. And so beverages have just gotten really expensive. And so we just don't buy a lot of it. 
sadly. I mean, I say sadly because I know my kids would love to have Sunny Delight in the fridge. I know my kids would love to have more drinks, more drink choices, but we have water and we have drink packets and that is fine. That's all they need. Um, general food categories has gone up 7%, over 7%. I'm not sure what they consider general food categories, but I would assume that is all the things that don't fall into the regular categories we've already talked about. So some things that I will say that I've seen huge increases on vanilla. If you are someone that cooks, vanilla has gone sky high. I saw it in the store the other day for $26 for a bottle of vanilla. You can get a much bigger bottle of pure vanilla at Sam's Club for about the same price. So again, watching those prices, comparing them to your you know, bulk store is gonna save you a lot of money there. Heavy cream has gotten really expensive. So finding the best deal on that is gonna be beneficial. Um, if you're a baker or you use it for cooking, we use it for homemade uh, sausage Alfredo things like that. There's lots of things that have gone up. Lots and lots and lots of things. And I know you've got to be feeling the pinch of inflation. We're feeling the pinch of inflation. And while I could continue to spend any amount I want on groceries, that's not very smart thinking and it would hurt us in other areas that we like to save money for. So we're just working hard to identify ways to work around those. So I hope this gave you kind of a peek into how I do things to save money on groceries and things. But I think it all boils down to the same things I keep saying. Number one is you have to shop smart. You have to compare prices. You have to go buy things when they're on sale. Number two, when it's a loss leader item, that's when you stock up on it, not at other times of the year. And then number three is shopping those clearance and markdown areas to find things that are below price. So it all boils down to like, here's the prices they're charging these days. Here's the price I'm willing to pay for it. And if it's in this area, we don't buy it. Okay. If it's at the price I want to pay or below, then we stock up on it. That's, that's how I look at it. So set your prices and be smart and shop that way. So that is all I've got for today. Again, I hope you found that at least a little bit helpful. And I hope you'll like the video. I hope you'll subscribe and stick around. Um, I do not have a topic yet for the next grocery video in this series. Um, working on that. My parents are getting moved back. They'll be here in a week. So I kind of think we might do the first sit down with my mom. Where we sit out here and we chat and we talk about our grocery habits. Kind of how we differ. How our, our thinking differs. Um, how I do things versus how she does things and where we feel our budgets lie and how close we stick to our budgets. And then once a month, my goal is to have mom come and talk to you guys with me and let's see if we change our thinking, how we're doing budget wise, how we are coping with the things like inflation and shrinkflation. Uh, can I convert my mom away from some of the things that she will not change? <laughs> I've, I've told y'all before, like my mom only likes Brahms milk. She will drive out of her way to buy Brahms milk versus drinking milk from Kroger or anywhere else. Uh, let's see if I can change that. There's things um, that she's only willing to buy meat at certain stores. We'll see if I can change that. Um, we'll see. My mom's a hard convert. You guys are going to like her, I think. Um, my mom's name is Mona or Mana. You can say it either way. Um, she will answer to both but it'll be nice to have um, a different perspective. Let's see how we feel about different things. Um, yeah, let's, I'll leave that at that one. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.